Today, so I just wanted to do this video to kind of extend on the previous video. The previous video is just about the actual process itself and left a lot of the other bits and pieces out. Um, people who had never uh, worked with uh, the drone before, there's some bits that were missing that would help them out. So this video will go over um, the device that we use to connect the drone to the computer. So it's a CP2102. Um, the cabling for that that connects it to the uh, actual drone. Um, it'll talk about installing the commander software. So Josh has updated the commander software so that it automates uh, this update. And it's really a matter of just following the bouncing ball. Um, it also goes through the process for PuTTY for those people who want to use PuTTY. Um, if you do have any issues, there's an invite for Discord in the description of this video. Uh, jump in there, it's a great community. If you have any issues, you can just post questions, uh, screenshots of where you're stuck, whatever it might be, and people there will help you out. All right, so uh, let's get on with the video and uh, off we go. Okay, so I just wanted to go over the CP2102 uh, setup, uh, how it's physically set up. Um, it's all very straightforward. So basically, this here is my board. And then all I need to do is wire this board via, so this plug here is a JST, um, three pin plug, the pitch on it, so the pitch is the space between pins, is a 1.25. Sometimes you get these plugs and they don't quite fit in. Um, and what you find is that you need to just, they'll have a little lug down the side, which you just need to remove um, because they're stopping it from going in correctly. They only go in one way. Oop, he's doing a runner on me. They only go in one way, and that is to ensure that um, the pins aren't in the wrong spot. If you have a look at it, you'll see that they're offset to one side. So they're offset to the right-hand side. And when you look at the pins, if I can get a picture of it, they're also offset. So those two offsets obviously match up. So you can only put it in one way, and that's you know, that way. The color coding of my wires don't actually mean anything. So I actually have the black wire in the middle pin, um, the, whereas ground which is normally signified by black is actually in this top pin so the pin closest to the gimbal so the top pin is ground that's very important if you put that pin in the wrong spot you're going to blow something up so this this red wire is the ground wire and it just comes around and it hooks up to changes color unfortunately <laughs> so it then turns into white uh, and white, as you can see, uh, goes to ground, which is the second pin down. We then have RX and TX. You can put RX and TX in the wrong spot. It doesn't matter. You're not going to break anything. All that happens is you don't get any readout uh, in whether you're using PuTTY or Commander. It just won't show you anything. So they obviously need to be in the right spot, but if you get them backwards, you're not going to blow anything up like you will if you get ground in the wrong spot. So one thing to remember is that RX on one end changes to TX on the other end because, and vice versa, because when I transmit from this device, I want it to be received at the drone. And when the drone transmits, I want it to be received at the USB device. So we have a quick look. We'll work out which one's the next one down. So who's on the black wire? Because that's the next one down. So if we follow the black wire, the black wire turns into the black wire. And the black wire is actually uh, TX. So that's transmit. It's transmit on this end. So at the drone end, it's RX. So the yellow wire uh, will be going to the gray wire here which is um, RX. So it'll be transmit at this end, but it's going to receive at this end. Hope that's pretty straightforward and clear. If it's not, have a look at some of our other videos. We do go over 
um, this device, how it's set up, which ones are suitable um, in other videos. Also, you can jump in the, under the Discord, the Discord server. I can't pronounce it. Also, you can jump on the Discord server um, and you can get free advice and help. You can ask questions. It's a really good place to get information. Um, there's also lists of devices um, that are suitable. Um, as a general rule, anything that's listed as USB TTL serial will work. What you want to keep away from is anything that says RS-232. RS-232 is an old standard which relates to the old type of serial ports. If you use one of those devices uh, in PuTTY or Commander, whatever you use, you're just gonna get garbage output. And that's a key indicator that you're using the wrong device. All right, hope that's all clear. And uh, yeah, if you have any problems, just jump on the Discord server. People there will help you out. They're really friendly. Um, and as I said, it's free. So use it if you need it. So. That's it in a nutshell, the wiring at this end, the wiring to the device. Um, and then you just plug the other end of this uh, USB cable into your computer. Um, you'll hear the device initialize, um, jump into device manager and have a look and see what COM port it's come up on. If it shows up as an unknown device, that means that you need to install a driver. Um, as a general rule, go back to wherever you bought it from, see if they have a driver for it. There is actually a universal driver um, for this chipset on the Discord server under one of the channels. Um, so if you have no luck from the vendor, um, try that one. Um, but yeah, if it shows up as an unknown device, it's not going to work. It needs to show up as a com as a port, uh, as a com port under the ports. And yeah, it's emulating that. Okay, so installing the software is fairly easy. Uh, the first thing you need to do is just click on the download link from either the GoPro Karma Fixes page or from within one of the videos that have been uh, posted. In my case, I've actually copied it and I'm just gonna paste it into my browser. Uh, and that'll take you to um, basically Google Drive where you can uh, download it. So all I need to do is just click on the download uh, button in the top right hand corner and then click on the download anyway, because Google can't scan it. It can't scan it because it's a, a MSI, which is basically um, an installer file. And in a second, it will start the download, but it'll also prompt me that this file hasn't been downloaded a lot. Uh, and it's just wants me to be cautious about it. And there we go, it's downloaded and it says, um, this file isn't commonly downloaded. Well, yeah, it's not because, you know, when you compare it to the number of files that are out there, this one isn't downloaded a lot. So I click on the three little buttons on the right and I say I want to keep the file. It's like saying, are you sure? So I go show more, keep anyway. So Defender's just picking up the fact that it's just not seen a lot. Okay, so the file is down now, now downloaded. If I just go to show in folder, I can see that file and I can just double click on it to start the install. So I double click on it. Uh, the next thing I do is I just go next. I'm happy with the location. I just want to change it to everyone. So everyone who logs onto the machine can access it. I go next, next again, um, and then I go yes. So some of those security prompts you won't see if you're on an older operating system. If you're on Windows 10, Windows 11, you'll generally see those sorts of things unless you disable them. So the next thing I do is I just click on close and that's it. The software is installed. Uh, if I go to my um, start menu, there will be a shortcut in there for the commander software. Okay, so there's two ways to do this process. This one is using PuTTY. Um, if you've already got PuTTY installed, know a bit about computers, have used it before, you might decide to do this. Um, so the first thing you want to do is plug in your uh, USB device and you should hear your computer make a beep so it's found it. Uh, you want to open device manager and have a look to see uh, what device it is. So in this case, we can see that my CP210X device is on COM4. So I need to set up PuTTY for COM4. I've already done that. Uh, so when you start PuTTY, you 
you want to change the connection type to serial. Um, you then need, so the serial line needs to be that, whatever that COM was, so in my case it's COM4, and the speed importantly needs to be 115200. They're the main things that you need to worry about. So at this point, what I can do is I can uh, open PuTTY, and I'm just gonna move it over this side a little bit, just so uh, the two things are separate. Now, one thing just to keep in mind, if you're starting up the drone without the controller, it will time out after about four or five minutes and shut itself down. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can finish this process well within that within that time time frame. So it's not too much of a concern, but just keep it in the back of your mind. Righto, so I've got my drone set up ready to go. I'm just gonna put my battery in and I am then going to turn the drone on. And as you can see, the drone is loading. And all I need to do is copy and paste or type the commands on the left into uh, that putty box. Now, you saw there the login screen came up that it disappeared because uh, other lines uh, came on. All you need to do is hit enter to see the login again. So the login name is root and the password is there. So that second character is actually a zero. It's case sensitive. So the first one's a capital G followed by a zero, capital P, letter R, letter O, capital H, E, R. And that should log me in. There we go. I'm logged in. So the second thing I need to do, I'm going to, I'm going to copy and paste the rest of them because um, it's just easier. So to paste into PuTTY in Windows, all you need to do is a right mouse click, and there you go. It just straight away sticks it in there. So I just hit enter on that, and that enables um, the file system to be written to. If you don't do that, you won't be able to write anything. So the next one just backs the current file up, which is always a good idea. Okay, so that's done. And for this next bit, what I need to do, um, there's two sets of data and I wanna select all the lines in the first set. So starting with the echo, so all those echo lines, I wanna grab, so there's the first set. So I copy that and I come back to PuTTY and I do a right mouse click and it pastes them all in. You'll note there that it has brought me back to um, a command prompt. So those have actually um, been put into the system. And then what I wanna do is I wanna grab the second lot of copy paste commands. That's all of them. So the second lot of echoes and I do the same. So I come back and I right click to put them in, but this time I don't get to that uh, command prompt on its own. So what I need to do, I just need to hit enter just so that that last one is done as well. So that's it, that's the process. It's done, that's now upgraded. If I wanted to, I could go look at the file uh, and see what it looks like. So if I just jump into and I just uh, do a cat on the file, so it shows me the output of the file so now that I've listed that file out I can just scroll back up and a couple of key things that you can check um, are the headers um, so it's the 2025 data so WMM 2025 and it was created on the 13th to the 11th 2024 so it's a US date so yeah that one's done that's updated um, that's good to go okay so this part of the video will run you through how to use the uh, commander software um, it's fairly straightforward um, one thing you need to do, just like you did with PuTTY, you need to determine what your COM port is that your USB device is on. Um, technically, it's not on that COM port, but what it's doing is it, it's emulating that COM port. So if you go into Device Manager, uh, open the port section and just have a look and see which one is your CP2102 or whatever device that you're using. So once you've done that, you can come back to this software and you can select from the drop-down menu, in this case, 
case it's COM4, so yeah, this one's correct. The next thing I need to do is just hit the disconnected button because that's the current state, it's disconnected. When I hit that, what it does is it connects. Make sense? Cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna power the drone on. I've already got my uh, CP2102 device connected. And what we will see is we will see it booting up uh, in the window. Now, the great thing about this software is that it does all the steps for you. You just need to press the button uh, to walk through each particular uh, component. So, as you can see now, the login button is flashing, which means that it's detected that uh, it's ready to log in. So I hit login. Uh, once I'm logged in, um, the mount locate button will start flashing, which means that I can now press that button. And what that button does is it makes the file system read write. In its current state, it's read only. Okay, so at this point, what I can do is I can just list out the files. And that shows me the files that are in the directory uh, where the wmm.cof file is, which is where the world magnetic model data is kept. So if I just hit the backup button, that'll back up that file and create another one. Um, if I just list out those files again, I can just confirm that uh, I now have a uh, WM back file, as you can see down here. So there's my back file. And the update WM button is now flashing, so I can click on it. And as you can see, it's basically doing the same thing as what the PuTTY version does. It's just in an automated fashion. So it's copied all those in. So what I can do is I can list out files again. Um, and we will now have a WMM.COF. What I can do is I can read that file. Now, so I hit the read file button. And if we scroll back up, let's see which one it read first. So this is the COF file. And as you can see, it's got the 2025, the WMM 2025, and the creation date 13th 11th, 2024. So that's, that's worked fine. There is a restore button that you can click if you want to roll back the file. And all that does is it gets rid of the current WM m.cof file and replaces it with that backup that you took earlier. So this one's done, this one's ready. I can disconnect it, put the cover back on, and it's, it's ready to test flight.